But since we've gone down the negatives, let's let's chat positive. What do you got in the positive realm? What how could this play out to be a good thing in the end? Letting players get paid their worth. <laughs> I think that's probably the, that's the biggest thing that jumped out for me because I was I was looking into this while you were talking before, but oh, you weren't paying the, attention to me when I speak. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, hence why you hence why I never know what you say. So what? Um, anyway, so I was looking up the salaries for draft picks for this last year and I looked up Tyrese Spicer who was the number one pick in the the most recent draft and he is making 71,401 as the base salary and, and 74,000 guaranteed compensation which like from a from an MLS I, sense I, I, is like pennies I like, wonder what uh, his uh, I wonder what sorry I don't mean to cut you back but I wonder I wonder what his contract clause is to get that extra dollar <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> that, that right? was, like that was. Oh that no! Was if I don't, blank. if I don't hit twenty five appearances, I'm only I'm losing a dollar. <laughs> that's. I think that's how much maybe everybody in the first round makes. I, I looked up a couple players towards the top of the draft, and they were all they all made that base salary. It must just be some calculation they do or whatever. But I mean, obviously, like comparatively to everybody else in the U.S., like it's it's probably good money. You know, it's it's above the median salary of what people make in this country but from an mls perspective in the mls bubble it is very very inexpensive which is good for teams bad for the players like i, I look at luis abram who's making like 10 times that amount of money and it's like are you really 10 times the level of player that these guys from college are i highly doubt it so i think if you got rid of the draft there's no like oh you're a draft pick this is how much you're gonna be making like it's set in stone and it's pretty low amount of money now you can have teams bidding for you if you are the best guy coming out of college. Multiple teams bidding for you is going to drive up your price. You're going to make more money. And I think overall, that's a good thing from a player's perspective. And I think that I think that could be a positive for possibly, you know, wanting to not tire t- tie yourself down to one academy. It could maybe maybe be an incentive to go the college route. And I can take a couple of years, get a degree. And then if I do really well. I could have teams bidding on me and drive up my price and get more money. So I definitely think that could be a positive for getting rid of the draft. No, I, I agree. I think, you know, and and this is one of the reasons why we mentioned, you know, we're not going to share too much on if it would happen because for that to happen where teams are bidding on this one player coming out, the single entity model would need to be removed. That, that, that doesn't happen in the way that the league is set up now. And you can argue good, bad, and different. I'd, I don't care enough to argue back with you, so you can argue with the wall, but that 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 is a a really good hypothetical that wouldn't happen unless the entirety of the league is restructured, which I got a feeling isn't happening anytime soon. But the one thing I will say is that kind of going back to an, a, a note that I, I mentioned before is teams would be able to utilize the college system almost as development team i'm trying to phrase this the right way almost as like development teams for their academy kids so i'm looking here right now and of the first 28 you know picks whatever one two three four five of them had mls next pro or mls kind of ties in their academy teams you know that are listed here only one of them went back to the team that they were in the academy for. And that was Chicago Fires taking Brian Dowd uh, out of Notre Dame, great school. Montreal took Grayson Duty, who was in the LA Galaxy system. Rail Salt Lake took Kevin Bonilla, who was in the FC Dallas system. Atlanta United took Jaden Hibbert, who was in Red Bull system. And then SKC took Ryan Shu, who was in Atlanta's system. So instead of these kids who were developed by the team and, and again this is now also leading leaning on the idea that these academies are getting more and more prevalent in their younger lives and they, they've stayed with them a lot longer right you're not spending six years to develop a player just to have him shipped up across the state across the country to play for a team that you know is going to be your rival right hypothetically of course um you can utilize this setup as okay you know be in our academy system for x amount of years if we don't think you're ready right now you can either you know and and by ready we mean mls next pro ready like you're, you're still a little bit off but we still think you have a future 
go off to UNC, go off to UConn, right? Where you can, you can keep your skills up. You can play a little bit. Then maybe after your freshman year, if you ball out, we'll sign you on a contract then. There's no, you know, wait till your, your sophomore year and, and see what you can do. We'll, we'll use, utilize it almost as a development pathway. Now, do I think that it would be like that versus just putting them in MLS next pro and moving on? No, but you don't know what other teams would do here. This is a hypothetical. So it would be cool to see that happen. But yeah, even if you go down, continue to go down the list, right? Inter-Miami took somebody from Philadelphia, right? RSL took somebody from NYCFC. Charlotte took somebody from Orlando City, right? Like all of this time that was put into developing these players and you're just losing them for nothing on a on a draft. Somebody's saying, yep, you came out of college. I want you now. And it, it just, it doesn't fit. And I know the draft is the American way of doing things. And I don't have a problem with the draft, by the way. I enjoy the draft. You know I do. I text you all the time to strangely very little reply i don't know why um that's because they do a draft in the middle of the day in the middle of the week <laughs> what, what are you doing working no you're not yeah working <laughs> ridiculous i'm sorry um, i don't have time to take out of my two o'clock on thursdays to go watch the team take a timeout in the middle of the draft <laughs> facts it's different though right where here because there's this whole process of teams having their own academy and putting all this time and effort in developing a player, you can't just say, oh, they play in college, now I want them, right? It's not like the NFL. It's not like NBA where it's like, oh, yeah, they came through uh, this AAU team, or or I don't even know what the, like, development for NFL is, if there's, like, a a league under that. But it's not like that where it's just, oh, you know, they they played on this team, they've got natural ability, let's let's sign them, right? This is a, a completely different look, and it probably should be revamped a little bit. At the very least, if it's going to be that way, there should be some payment for it. Um, but I do think a positive of, of removing the draft would be to allow a restructure of something like that, where you're not just putting all this time and effort to develop a player through your academy just for him to say, oh, I kind of want to go to college just in case, like we were talking about before, right? The the idea of, of having that backup plan and then, oh, I got to move across the country now. I'm trying to think if I can think of another positive, but I think I was well, mainly... I thought- there t- I think there are tons too, right? Just to build off of that, like the idea of you, you mentioned getting paid what you, you want. And, you know, we talked about the parity aspect of the being a negative to the teams, but the positive is player focused, right? So yeah, the parity aspect means that you're going to go to the better teams, but it also means that you're going to get to choose where you live. You may get to stay at closer to home. You don't have to pack up all your bags and just move across the country, right? That's true. That's a good point. You know, and that's that's kind of the big one. Because what I'm, I'm again, I'm noticing stuff like this where DC United picked a guy from Portland, right? Literally across the country, he would have had to move. Now he stayed and played at, at Sacramento Republic, but you're you're looking at these players like literally trying to go thousands and thousands of miles away from home for their first time ever. Some of them, you know, hypothetically, and 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 you don't have to if you get rid of this draft system, that doesn't have to happen. You can go ahead and set up the process such that they can pick where they get to play which is is positive so again i think i think the negative is always team focused right there's and, and we have that the the player focus as well where it's less reliant and, and they move away from them right but the positive is all player right and that's why the nwsl cba was so so big was it's a very player positive cba i i think it's i think there are positives and negatives from a player perspective I think if you're if you're one of the top guys in college, it's definitely very very positive. Feel like though, if you're kind of a mid, more like middle of the ground player who is maybe like a late first round draft pick, an early second round draft pick, there's a decent chance now. Or previously, you could have a direct pathway right to MLS or an MLS academy or one of the two teams. Versus if you got rid of the draft. I don't think a lot of teams would necessarily look in that direction if you're kind of at that level of maybe like second or third round pick. Now you're you're probably looking at USL as an option for them. Where where maybe maybe that's the direction they're already going. I, I don't have the data to look at where all the second and third round picks ended up going, but at least with the draft, like a team drafts you, you seemingly, unless I'm misunderstanding the draft, would have an option to go into their academy. Whereas I think getting rid of the draft, they're they're probably not taking a look at second and third round picks too often. I think they're going to focus on the academy and 
the couple of top level guys coming out of college. Yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't disagree there. I think there's, there's always going to be positive and negatives to the boat, you know, to both of it. But I guess the last thing we can kind of talk about is how does it pan out for the development of players slash league long term, right? So if this were to happen, do we as a t- as a as a country get better or do we get worse? No, I'll, I'll leave that to you. I feel like I want to disagree with the, the thought I have on this because it just, for some reason, logically, it just doesn't feel right. But a part of me feels like it would get better without it because I think you would see players go into academies more. Like you were talking about, I mean, you kind of already touched on that where most of these guys, it sounds like, are affiliated with some kind of MLS team and then they just go to college and based on their performances in college, they they likely move around to another MLS team, but... I, I think the level of coaching is probably a bit higher with MLS teams and MLS academies versus yeah you know, and, and like what they have access to in terms of like facilities and training programs cool. and all of that versus like losing potentially four years of that de- key development playing in college and it's not that college is going to like ruin your career as we talked about there's plenty of guys who came out of the college system and have done very well for themselves but uh, I think if they stayed in MLS academies, they could potentially grow as players even more. And it's again, it's a risk because obviously more people in the academy, it's going to be tougher. It's going to be tougher to kind of stand out and be a, more of a breakout player who who climbs <laughs> up, which I think is worse for the players, better for the teams. I think it'll be good for the teams in terms of finding more talent and guys pushing to reach higher levels. Um, so there, I kind of am leaning towards that. I think the development would be better without the draft system. But again, it just, I don't, I feel like I'm missing something because it just kind of also doesn't feel right to say that. Yeah. That, that's the American sport. And you're trying to, trying to break. You yeah. Know, break the I mold. think it's that. I think, I think you're right. No, that's exactly what it is. Cause I, I was in kind of the same boat. I'm like draft has produced so many good players in, in NFL and NBA. And, and it doesn't make yeah, sense. That it gives it opportunities the for these players and stuff. And it's like, it's weird to right. be like, yeah, you should get rid of it because it'll make some, Soccer better, right? Exactly, and and I'm and and again, there's always two ways to look about this, right? There's does it make MLS better? Does it make all of soccer better? Right? Where if you go and draft a guy and you throw him in the academy or you you throw him in the MLS Next Pro system, he doesn't pan out. If he's not showing what he can do, or he gets hurt, or, or this whole bunch of things, that career may just be over. Whereas if he has options from USL, USL one, MLS next pro, like the lower levels, and he gets to choose where, you know, it's close to home. It's a better fit. You might see that player blossom better than if he had to move across the country and play in a, you know, an empty stadium of, of MLS next pro guys. And, you know, there's this whole thing that goes out there. Now that's generally overall, I think you're just letting players find the best fit for them, which means that they could end up being more successful long-term now MLS specific. I think we're pretty much break even. I don't think it matters too much. Like we mentioned before, it's uh, um, the the reliance on college players is not as heavy as it is in other sports. I don't think that getting rid of the draft would be a net negative. I think you you lose out on that one or two player a year type of impact. But for the most part, you've already got such a heavy reliance on your academy kids for the mo- you know anyway for most teams that the odd one or two college kids that aren't there isn't going to to hurt you too much. So I think overall, I think that it's a net positive just for the game, right? Whether it means that this player is in the U.S. system, whether they choose to move overseas. I've seen a couple of people go to like Finland or something. And if that's their fit, that's their fit, right? But they're not locked into something where it's like, oh, you know, we don't really want to let you go, even though HLK gel Helsinki or, or whatever is coming over with a, a, a bid. Like, oh, I don't know if I want to let you go right now. Like, it gives them the freedom to move and, and fit the best for them. So I think it's a net net positive, but not as big of an impact as it would be for NFL, NBA, or even NWSL right now, who has you know kind of set this this tone. So yeah, I would agree with that. I would love to do if if I had more free time, I'd love to do more analysis on and see how many how many guys kind of slip through the first round that end up having. And I know this is subjective. Obviously, there would have to be some criteria, but I'll call it like a successful career because I think those are the guys 
you probably miss out on by taking out the draft. Because I still think I still think the top guys end up joining the league. So I don't think MLS is missing out on your your Duncan McGuire's or your Moist Bombitos. I think those guys were top ten picks. I think at least ten players out of the draft are probably getting signed to MLS team somewhere. So I would be curious uh, to I, see. Huh? I actually did that. You did that? Of course when. you did, you loser. Kinda. Not not here, but um oh come on. No no. For one of the one of the series I did in the off season when I was still using Instagram, um, was redrafting the like last ten drafts or something just to kind of see who had the best career overall. Yeah, and let me let me see if I'll, I'll scroll down here and find it for you. So I just list some couple names, but the first one that comes to mind, uh, Jack Elliott. Jack Elliott, like a fourth round supplemental draft pick, turning into one of the biggest uh, impactful players for. Philly over the last couple of years. Yeah. Kamal Miller, I think, was also a second round pick. Probably another guy that might have slipped under the, the radar without the draft. Sean Johnson, number 51 in 2010. Stephen Betashore, number 30. Seth Sinovic, 25. Eric Alexander, 44. Chris Schuler, 39. Those are the uh, positions they were picked. Joe Willis at 50. Ja Plata at 49. Michael Boxall at 51. Uh, Hector Jimenez, 34, Bernardo Anor, 48, Servando Carrasco, married to Alex Morgan, I believe, 27, Ray Gaddis at 35, quite the career he had in Philly, Daniel Sterez, 66, still going, Miguel Ibarra, 65, Brian Rowe, 63, Aaron Schoenfeld, 58, Antoine Hopeno, 89, Kevin Vargas, 75. I mean, these are just some of the names that are, are rolling off the tongue here. Seems yeah. like they got oh Adam Adam Yon, Atlanta United legend at fifty three. Yeah, I mean, Alex the, Dijon eighty. These these are guys that I think probably would fall under the radar without the draft. And, and I can't you, believe you, you have, let me go that long without cutting me off. <laughs> I'm just I, out I, here I, naming so, once, MLS draft picks. Once we started going down the uh, like, it, once it, it just got too long at that point. We we were getting into <laughs> we're getting into some murky territory. Hour uh, long, thirty six. <laughs> I gotta get that one in there. Yeah, uh, fair enough. But yeah, I mean, like you probably you may miss out on these guys without the draft, and and I think that's where you kind of have to weigh weigh those pros and cons. Like you know how much how much quality are you losing, missing out on a couple of these guys who probably kind of fall through the cracks, versus I don't know. I guess getting more people in the academy, like maybe some of these guys develop even better in the academy. I don't know, but that's why it's a hypothetical. 